Hey, it's Mike from the Run Testers. Now, of all the members of the team, I am the one that probably gets the most smartwatches in um, to test. Um, I write about them for a lot of different publications. Um, so I thought we'd have a little bit of fun with one that I've got in at the moment and uh, take it out running with me. So this here is the Hublot Big Bang E Premier League. Now, this is a luxury smartwatch. Um, it cost uh, four thousand three hundred pounds, five thousand two hundred dollars. Only two hundred are being uh, made. I think there's going to be some specifically kind of lighter versions uh, made for referees in the Premier League to use and um, for timekeeping. Um, I've managed to get my hands on one. I've only had it for a few days, so not really enough time to do a full review. But I thought I'd squeeze in one uh, run with it, see what it's like, and you know, see what it's like to run with a. Uh, £4,000 uh, luxury smartwatch. So yeah, here's just kind of a little video on um, how I got on, what I thought of the design, um, how it performed against another running watch and uh, whether it holds up um, for running. So yeah, here's my um, first run review on the Hublot Big Bang E Premier League. Okay, so I'll start with design first and this being uh, Hublot's third smartwatch, um, it's kind of keeping with, you know, being inspired by its kind of non-smart um, Big Bang watches. So um, as you can imagine, there's kind of high grade materials that they're putting in this smartwatch. So you're getting um, a titanium, a satin finish kind of titanium case. Um, you're getting sapphire glass. You're getting um, ceramic on the uh, watch buckle. Um, so it's everything you kind of would expect from a luxury smartwatch. Now, I used the um, the first version, which was kind of a World Cup um, smartwatch tie-in. Um, that had a 49 millimeter case. Now this has dropped down to a 42 millimeter case. So that is kind of smaller than obviously that original, but it's also um, smaller than something like the Tag Heuer Connected, which I um, had. We have a video up that I tested last year, um, which was 45 millimeters. So it's smaller. I think that's a big plus because on my kind of skinny wrist, that first um, Big Bang smartwatch looked huge um, on my wrist. Now on this one, I think it's a bit more manageable. Um, I actually think this is a nicer design. Um, I think it looks nicer. It feels like a luxury, more of a luxury smartwatch that I would want to wear. Now I'm not a particularly, you know massive kind of hublot watch fan but this is a this is a much nicer looking smartwatch than its um first watch um in terms of other things so in terms of navigation you've got a touchscreen display so it's a 1.2 inch 390 by 390 resolution amoled display so similar to something like the huawei watch gt2 which we've um, tested as well um you've also got this um twisting um, watch crown as well which um, you can press to open up um, google's assistant um, and you can twist to kind of scroll through um, screens and it's a little bit i would say um, kind of stiff in terms of um, navigating and scrolling through it's a bit slow but uh, it works uh, kind of does the job essentially um, the other big thing as well obviously is uh, this strap so it's a kind of fabric purple fabric uh, strap on this one which has kind of gone to match with the kind of premier league themed um, watch face you can see um, it's a velcro it uses velcro to kind of secure around your wrist um, what i found is that i think it probably the velcro area probably needed to be a little bit bigger because my wrists are quite slim, so I actually almost had to go over slightly a bit of the Velcro to get it to fit. And even then, kind of when I was running, um, it kind of moved about a little bit. So I would ideally need a smaller kind of strap or just something more accommodating. Um, I think for most people, it'll be fine. Now, you don't have to go with the purple. Um, there's Hubo's done a kind of strap configurator um, kind of setup where you can use something so you can pick from different materials. So, stuff like calf, leather, um, alligator, you've got other fabric um, bands, sports bands. That's going to add about five to six hundred pounds onto the price. So, that's kind of something to keep in mind. But generally, I think it's a much nicer looking smartwatch than its first one. Um, it's it's a showy smartwatch. If that's the kind of thing you, you like, um, and those, this is the kind of design that you like, then it's going to appeal. I say, I wish the strap was a little bit smaller, but generally it's been fine. And uh, it's a really nice looking smartwatch and much nicer 
Um, looking at the first one, I think this is more what um, I'd like to see from Hublot when they, if they continue making smartwatches. I guess before I get into kind of running performance, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, kind of software and what you're getting here. Um, so it's Google's Wear OS. Um, you've got a Snapdragon Wear 3100 um, processor kind of powering performance, um, which is not Qualcomm's latest um, kind of chipset and platform. Uh, so from that perspective, you're not getting the latest in terms of kind of what is powering this watch. Um, it's Wear OS, it's kind of what, if you've used a Wear OS watch before, it's all very kind of familiar. You've got kind of uh, things like Google Pay, you can download apps, um, you get your notifications, it's the same gestures to kind of navigate and interact, um, all very familiar. And it's one of those platforms where it's, you know, it's good in places, not so much in other places. And in terms of what Hublot is kind of added on top of that, um, you've got kind of typically, you know, some of their own watch faces, um, you've got some kind of time-based um, apps, so there's a chron chron uh, chronometer, um, easy for me to say, um, simply just keeping the time and you know one I think geared towards um, for when it's been used for uh, by referees. Um, they've also got a Hublot store which essentially just pulls together all of the stuff that they offer, so their watch faces and a couple of their apps which kind of work as watch faces as well. So the main one is the um, Premier League app, which essentially gives you a watch face, which will um, do, does a variety of things. And actually, it's a really nice um, app. It kind of will count down to, uh, to the games, uh, the next Premier League game. Um, it will give you kind of real time kind of goal updates, substitutions. Uh, you can kind of go in and see the lineups. Um, it would even I think it's quite nice as it will even count down the kind of interval period as well. Um, so you can kind of step out and you can kind of see you've got enough time to go and get a drink and stuff before the second half starts so that's kind of the main main kind of added thing um it's not going to be a big deal for most people um but yeah it's kind of wear OS at its heart at its core um some people are going to love it some people aren't um it's a bit of a mixed bag for me um I might, hasn't really changed my feelings about wear OS. nice to see who blows stuff on there um but essentially it's a wear OS watch and it's more of the same in terms of what you're going to get from that as a platform. Okay, so let's get into running performance. Now, when it comes to tracking your runs on, on this watch, um, you can kind of go for Google's kind of um, Fit apps or Fit Workout app. Um, what I decided to do, I actually decided to download um, a third party app. So I downloaded Strava to track my runs just to see how, you know, how that worked. Um, pretty straightforward in terms of downloading. I downloaded it directly from the watch. Took a few seconds, had to set it up on login on my phone, and then I could get running. Um, now this doesn't have built-in GPS um, like the first um, version, so it's connected GPS, so it's relying on your phone to track your runs. Um, so I went out with my um, went out with this. Uh, I went out with um, the Garmin Enduro, which I'm testing at the moment, uh, long-term testing with the guys. Um, and a heart rate monitor chest strap. Uh, and it was kind of, I did an eight mile run, um, no real kind of, you know, pressure on pace, just going out, do some mileage, um, just to see uh, how this, get, this would kind of get on basically. What I found um, is that um, the screen, I think the screen visibility is not fantastic uh, in kind of in dealing with the glare from the sun. So definitely, that's an issue for me. It didn't make it impossible to see a screen, but you definitely had to kind of angle it a little bit more to kind of see things. When you're using a third party app or some third party app, so like with I was using Strava, um, when you're using it and it's running, sometimes it will just jump back to the main watch screen and then you have to kind of go back in and open the Strava app to kind of see how you're getting on, um, which is not ideal. I mean, it's not for every app, but for Strava, that's kind of how it works from Wear OS. Um, in terms of the kind of accuracy, so on the eight mile run, um, it kind of posted slightly higher um, in terms of how much distance I tracked, uh, had me a little bit quicker as well, which is kind of what I find on smartwatches. They kind of clock you a little bit quicker in your pace. Um, it wasn't far off, but um, you know, there was enough of a margin and that, that was the, the eight miles, 8.1 miles was on the Garmin Enduro. In terms of battery life, so from 100% it dropped to 66% on just over an hour's run, whereas the 
Garmin Duo, which obviously is built for you know battery life that was kind of two two percent or something like that. Um, so yeah, massive drain. I think if you this is you know this is a smartwatch like a lot of smartwatches where it's kind of really designed for you know going out and doing five um, k or you know twenty thirty minutes of running. Um, but ultimately, when you're using GPS or connected GPS. Um, it's gonna dent the battery life and on the battery life anyway just generally it's supposed to be around a day but what I found is that um, if you factor in a workout like running um, it probably comes down from 100% in the morning to about 20% or even running out of battery by about 10 11 o'clock so it's not quite 24 hours it is around a day uh, but in the evening you're probably gonna have to charge it um, so yeah running performance actually fine the heart rate monitoring obviously just didn't work for me the um gps tracking just a little bit um tracked a little bit more um distance compared to the garmin um and had me a little bit quicker in the pace so okay not amazing definitely think it's one better suited for kind of those shorter um kind of runs casual runs really okay so initial verdicts on the hublo big bang e premier league like i say I've only had it for a few days, so I only had enough time to do one run. Um, and to be honest, it's not too different from what I kind of got from using the Tag Heuer um, and some other kind of luxury smartwatches that I've I've had the opportunity to run with. It's it's going to be fine um, kind of for shorter runs. I think longer runs, um, you're going to start seeing discrepancies in terms of the data. Um, it's not really for someone that's serious about running. I think the Tag Heuer has got a little bit more going for it in terms of terms of that. Um, and I would probably say that I had a kind of slightly nice experience with that. But this is a nice watch. It is an expensive watch. Um, the fit didn't quite work for me, but I think it will for most people. Um, is it worth £4,300, £5,000? I mean, it's, it really depends on how, how much, you know, you really value... Um, the things like design and you happy with kind of working with Wear OS, which is okay but not amazing. I think Hoblo's um, extras are actually quite nice and I like that aspect of it and I'd be interested to see whether they start to do more of that, maybe if they persevere and still continue doing these watches. The fact they're only making 200 suggests, you know, this is not a huge deal for them, but it's a nice extra for, you know, their watchmaking business in terms of, you know, what else they do um, and what other watches they sell. So, yeah, kind of initial verdict on the Hublot uh, Big Bang E Premier League for running. Okay, fine, you know, not, ama not amazing. It's kind of what I expected. Okay, so there you have it. That is our kind of um, first run thoughts on the um, Hublot uh, Big Bang E Premier League. Now, as I said, I've only got this for a few days, so I've kind of managed to squeeze that one uh, run in, so not really enough time to do a full review. Uh, but hopefully give you a kind of sense of, Kind of what this very expensive um, luxury smartwatch is capable of um if you've got any comments um obviously let us know down below um like and subscribe hit the bell um to find out about our new videos um if there's any other smartwatches that you think we haven't really given enough love to uh from a kind of running perspective um let us know as well and you know we get these in all the time and you know between us we'll test so let us know on that front as well and yeah see you for the next run testers video